It has been what feels like my entire life since I've been able to knife battle a relatively modern graphics card off of Craigslist for a price that didn't produce an involuntary harakiri response. But it's finally happened. I bought this pretty thick version of a GTX 1080 Ti for about 380 US dollars, depending on the exchange rate at the time. And today we're gonna admire it, then we're gonna play some games on it, and then we may even compare it to another graphics card. Now this GTX 1080 Ti is probably the EVGA card design that's produced the most inappropriate physiological response in me of pretty much any EVGA graphics card ever. So I am very excited to have a look at it. Wow, this is quite a limp old box. That is actually really nice packaging because it's you're just shipping the graphics card in foam so it'll be nice and protected. Ooh, there it is. We've still got our EVGA case candy. Now I think this really cool looking shroud design is actually plastic, which does dampen my inappropriate physiological response just a little bit, uh, but it is still there because we've got one hell of a fin stack under here with those three awesome looking fans. At least the back plate isn't turtle murder material. So that's good, that's nice. And in terms of physical condition, aside from being a little bit sticky, this graphics card is actually in very nice condition considering that it could potentially be quite old. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see how the temperatures hold up with this cooler. Now, considering that the GTX 1080 Ti was launched back in 2017, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's going to start struggling with bladder control soon. However, with its 11 gigs of GDDR5X and its many, many cores and ROPs and things, I'm sure this middle-aged man is still going to put up quite a fight. I may not be able to pee anymore, but I can still kick your ass. Especially considering that this is the For the Win 3 edition, which is one of the ep variants of the GTX 1080 Ti. But with that, I'm gonna drop it into the test system I've been using lately with a 12400F in it and 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. Now, as is tradition, we're starting off with GTA 5, running at 1080p, very high settings. I really hope the 1080 Ti can run this game well. Wow, this is running extremely well. Um, especially, oh, actually, it's running too well. It's running at that point where the frame rate is so high, the GTA 5's engine starts freaking out and then stuttering. Uh, so... Actually, the 1080 Ti is too good at playing GTA 5 uh, at very high settings. So at 1080p, you should probably limit your frame rate. Otherwise, you're going to get those stutters. Uh, other than that, though, um, the GPU utilization is not super high. But, you know, it, it doesn't really matter in this situation because, again, the game is running too well, if anything. <laughs> Whoa, Battlefield 5 at 1080p ultra settings is, it, it's running very well. Uh, we're also sitting at about 160 frames per second. Fairly similar to GTA 5's frame rate, although we're sitting much closer to that 100% GPU utilization, which is good. Now, what I find really interesting about this is the power draw that's hovering just under 250 watts, which is a far cry from the modern higher-end GPUs. Something like an RTX 3080 Ti easily draws over 350 watts while playing a game like this. Obviously, you get more performance, but still, that's, that's not a super high power draw by today's standards. But yeah, from what I've seen so far, it seems like the 1080 Ti is actually kind of overkill for 1080p gaming, uh, which is impressive for a five-year-old GPU. Next, we're going to try a more demanding game, Cyberpunk, which a lot of the reason why it's more demanding is just because it's terribly made, but that's besides the point. Which, at 1080p with the high preset, is giving us about 70 frames per second. 
Now, unfortunately, one of the shortcomings of the GTX 1080 Ti is that we can't enable features like ray tracing or DLSS at higher resolutions. Uh, but in terms of ray tracing, I, I don't think that really matters, to be honest. But yeah, this is a surprisingly good feeling playable cyberpunk experience. Good job, middle-aged GPU. Wow, this is clearly how Fortnite's supposed to run. So this is a 1080p with competitive settings. And on this 240 hertz monitor, that is some crisp movement we've got going there. But anyway, with that, let's have a quick look at some more detailed benchmarks, and then we're gonna rip off that beautiful cooler and repaste it to see if it helps improve the temperatures at all. Now part of me really hopes that all I need to do is undo these four central screws to remove the cooler. You know, kind of like higher end Asus graphics card coolers. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. I may have to undo the nine million other screws as well. So fingers crossed that this cooler is as easily removable as a Republic of Gamers GPU. Uh, no, that is very, very, very much not the case. Okay, well, I guess it's gonna be a long day of screwing. Well, it's several months later and we're finally done screwing. Uh, hopefully it just kind of pops off now and there's not more, more stuff we need to deal with. Uh, uh. Oh, the whole connector is ripped out. Okay, well, that's very nice. Okay, those are undone. It came off really easily. It's just the one that we broke. Oh yeah, that was just mildly traumatic, but we finally have our GPU revealed. Now around the front of the board, we do have some GPU cheese going on, which I find quite common with older GPUs. Although this one does seem to have a particularly bad case of it. The thermal paste application is actually not that bad, but you know, let's repaste it and see what happens. Um, but look at the size of that die, it's huge. It's also got a real chonky power delivery where in my idiot struggling, I did kind of tear the thermal pad, which could be a problem because I don't think I have a replacement for that. Maybe it'll be fine. Wow, that is one hell of a die. Damn, it's thick. Yeah, let's hope I didn't break it. Well, I mean, everything lights up, which is a good start. Yes, there we go. Oh no, I've made it much worse somehow. Look at that, it, it's, it's almost immediately jumped up to 83. 84, oh, it's starting to throttle. I definitely did something wrong. Okay, so one of the fans isn't spinning. I'm assuming that's the problem. Okay, well, there's your problem right there. Um, the GPU is so hot now. Holy crap. <laughs> let, me, let me plug that back in and see how much that helps. Okay, well, after fixing the result of my gross incompetence, we're just back to square one in terms of temperatures. So that was a complete waste of time. Yay! And then finally, in a petty attempt at revenge for the 1080 Ti wasting my time by having me incompetently <laughs> repaste it, uh, I'm gonna try and emasculate this graphics card by comparing it to this, which is an RTX 3060. Who knows, maybe this comparison will actually prove how badass the 1080 Ti is, but whatever happens, it'll be interesting. 
Wow, this is running weirdly similarly. This is Battlefield 5 running at 1080p ultra settings, just like on the 1080 Ti. And uh, if I couldn't see the power draw figures and the graphics card in the case, I would not have known that this was a different graphics card in this system. Having said that, I can see the power draw and it is about 100 watts lower than the power draw on that 1080 Ti, which that's actually quite impressive in terms of the efficiency of the 3060. Having said that, let's have a look at some more benchmarks to just get a fuller picture of how they stack up. They do perform very similarly, don't they? Although in most cases, Daddy still has a bit of an edge. However, Baby is a lot more efficient than Daddy and has a better feature set. So, um, yes, evolution, I guess. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, sub to the channel and consider watching another video. A suggestion will pop up in a second. And until three seconds from now, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.